Greetings, Kingdom Talk family. I'd like to personally uh, thank Coaches Ariel and Prese, and I would like to encourage them. I, I'm thankful that they've allowed people who are part of the kingdom to be on this platform to be able to continue to expand the message of the kingdom. So thank you so much for that opportunity. Um, I'd like to share something today um, in regards to how we need to look at our relationship with God in a way that is beyond um, what a lot of people who are caught up in religion think, um, especially as a kingdom citizen and a son of God, you need to have a different perspective of your relationship with him. And so I want to share this lesson with you. This lesson's title is It's Personal. And we really need to uh, recognize that our relationship with God is personal. Um, it is necessary to come together as the body of Christ and have corporate times together. But um, I find and I see in so many people's lives that that corporate time is not as impactful when there has been nothing done personally. So we need to make sure that we have that right relationship with God personally. I'm gonna go ahead and pray and then we'll get into the lesson. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity. We thank you for each person who is here and has ears to hear what your word has to say. We ask that you would speak through my mind and my mouth and allow people to hear you through their ears and that you will be glorified with what is done. We ask all this in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So like I said, the title of this lesson is it's personal. And um, I just really believe that we have to really um, delve into this area because so many people um, get caught up in what I say is religion, basically. You get caught up in religion and it's really um, more about your personal relationship with the Lord and um, your perspective on that is so important. You can get caught up into religious activity. You can get caught up into doing what people consider the right things, um, looking very religious and holy and all of that. But do you have a right relationship with the Lord yourself personally? When you're by yourself, are things okay between you and God? So let's look at it. It has always been the, the plan of God to have personal relationships with you as his sons and daughters from the moment of your rebirth into the kingdom of God. So that's always been God's plan um, from the beginning where things got messed up in the garden with Adam and Eve. God has, from that point, wanted to reestablish that. Um, when he sent Jesus into the world, he reestablished things. But it is up to us personally to seek after, to develop a greater relationship with the Lord. Um, there is always another level. There's always more that we can learn from him. There's always a closer relationship we can have with him and we have to seek that it doesn't just happen automatically it doesn't happen just because you get saved you have to continue to develop continue to grow in your faith continue to um, learn more about his word his word has always got something for you to learn i don't care how long you've been a christian i don't care how long you've been in the word there's always something more for you to learn there's always a revelation that God is trying to unfold. So we need to continue to develop. Um, let's look at Romans chapter 10 and verse nine, and I'm reading from the Brian Standard Bible. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So when we got saved, that was just the beginning. And it is, speaking to you specifically things have always been about you personally being in relationship with god it's wonderful for us to have our families 
is part of the body of Christ. It's wonderful to have friends, the people we work with. Um, all of that's wonderful. The corporate thing is wonderful. But are you developing as a son of God in the kingdom of God? Are you doing what's necessary? Um, we don't have to work for our salvation, but we need to continue to develop once we are in the kingdom. Jesus took care of making sure that we were able to come into the kingdom, but we need to do our part as far as developing and fulfilling whatever it is God has assigned us to do while we're here in being part of that body. Um, Jesus has left us the work to do, so we need to continue to develop, continue to do the things necessary to um, fulfill that. Um, Romans chapter 8 and verse 14 in the Berean Standard Bible, it says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. So we have to continue to develop, continue to um, have ears to hear when the Spirit is trying to lead us a certain way. We need to um, continue to just develop in our spiritual life. Um, those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. If we are calling ourselves a Christian and we are not allowing God to lead us by His Spirit, then we are um, just babes in Christ. You're not developing into that son that he's calling for. The earth is waiting for us to operate as sons. So we need to continue to develop. In Romans 8, 16, the um, A-B-I-P-E version of the Bible, um, it says in that spirit testifies to our spirit that we are sons of God. So if we are doing what is necessary to develop and continue to grow in our relationship with the Lord, um, the spirit of God will testify to the fact that we are sons of God. You must not be dependent on anyone regarding your relationship with the Lord. And this is something that I think has been a, a huge problem in the body of Christ. People have become so um, dependent on religious systems that they have not sought out God for themselves, have not done what's necessary to develop their own um, walk with the Lord. And yes, it is a good thing to have the gifts that God has given the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, teacher, and evangelist. It's wonderful for those gifts because those are necessary to the body of Christ. But every person who's in the body of Christ needs to develop. It can't just be put on those gifts and we do nothing but just receive, receive, receive. We need to develop ourselves so that if a gift is not available, uh, which is a real thing in today's world, if you don't have access to someone who is walking in one of the fivefold gifts, then you still need to be able to operate as a son of God. You still need to be able to do what God is calling you to do. If that's not there, you need to continue to be able to operate. You don't want to be so immature in your Christian walk that you're always depending on other people to help you along, always asking someone to pray about this and that but are you praying always asking someone to help with whatever situation you're are you asking god are you developing to the place where god can work in your life personally where you don't have to always um depend on someone else and i i really believe that a lot of times that is where um, people experience things such as church hurt um, I hear that so often and I feel like when I hear that and you hear the stories behind it that the dependence on someone in a position or one of the Bible gifts or just people who are part of a church that dependence on them 
where they end up being disappointed because the person is either not there for them or something happens, any of that. We have to have our relationship with God where it needs to be. So that does not make us uh, move away from the church. If something happens or if someone in one of those fivefold ministry gifts positions doesn't do what we feel they should do or they fall or any of those things, it does not move us from God. Our relationship has to be with God. So we need to make sure that we are developing. Um, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, the Amplified, it, it says, Do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, uh, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is. That is the good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. And the reason why I'm emphasizing the word you is because I want to keep reminding you that your relationship with God is personal. You have to do something. You have to develop. You have to grow. You have to build your faith. You have to do what's necessary. God is not going to take a cup and just dump things on you. He's not going to make your faith grow by magic. God wants us to develop. We have to do what's necessary to do that. Um, you must know the voice of the Lord and fully rec recognize when God is speaking to you. And be so certain that it is God that you do not need anyone to agree with you. We are living in a time where we really need to hear God for ourselves. We really need to be led by the Spirit of God in our decision making. We really need to know when God is speaking to us. And you need to um, be so developed in His Word that you are not moved even when someone does not agree with you. Even when that someone has a title or has uh, the alphabet behind their name or anything, you have to be developed in the word personally. It has to be in you. So you're able to stand no matter what takes place. You're able to stand on God's word. Um, Galatians chapter one and verse 16 I'm going to read the brand standard um, Bible version, then the CEV, and then the Amplified. It says, to reveal his son in me, this is Paul talking about his, um, his relationship with God. To reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. I did not rush to consult with flesh and blood. Um, in the CEV, it says to show him show me his son so i would announce his message to the gentiles i didn't talk about this talk about this over with anyone so he didn't consult and in the amplified it says to reveal his son in me so that i might preach him among the gentiles as the good news the way of salvation i did not immediately consult with anyone for guidance regarding God's call and his revelation to me. And so we need to, especially in this time period that we're living in, know that our relationship with God is personal, that we know that we know that we know that God is working in us and in our lives, um, that he's guiding us, he's directing us, that we know when he speaks to us, we know when the Spirit is leading us. Those are the things that we need to make sure that we are doing and, and developed in. And when we have questions, uh, when we are unsure, those are um, times when you become susceptible to things that are not from God. We need to be sure. We need to be 
steadfast in his word and um, led by his spirit in a way that we know that we know that we know that God is leading us. Okay, however, let's look at John chapter 16 and verse 13, Berean Standard Bible. It says, however, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears, and he will declare to you what is to come. So, if we have the Spirit of God in us, living in us, from the time that we were saved, we have the Spirit of God living in us, then he will reveal to us what we need to know. He will reveal um, whatever it is that we need for life. We need to listen be listening for God's voice, speaking to our spirits, letting us know what his will is in our lives. And um, I've heard so many people um, ask the question, you know, well, how do I know for sure it's God? Um, if you are in his word, which is necessary for all of us, we need to be in the word of God, studying his word. When you hear something if you're not sure if it doesn't um if you don't have peace in your spirit and it doesn't line up with god's word you know you're not hearing from god because when god speaks to you you have peace and it always will line up with his, what his word says we need to know his word so that we do know the voice of god we know when he is speaking to us when God speaks to you, he will not contradict what he said. His word always confirms what he has said. Do not receive what anyone tells you when it contradicts God's word or what God has said. Um, Galatians chapter 1 and verse 8 in the Amplified, it says, But even if we or an angel from heaven should proclaim to you a gospel contrary to that which we originally preached to you, let him be condemned to destruction. So if someone tries to uh, give you a prophetic word or just someone is speaking to you something, um, trying to give advice, whatever the situation may be, if it does not line up with God's word, you don't receive it. I don't care how what position a person's in, what their situation is, education. I don't care what the situation is. You need to make sure that what you're listening to lines up with God's word, no matter who it is you're dealing with. Um, and I can't emphasize that enough. We need to make sure that we are receiving what lines up with God's word. I've heard and seen too many situations where people trusted more in someone in a position of authority, a doctor, lawyer, um, even pastors. Um, they trusted their voice rather than trusting what God's word says, trusted their voice more. And we can't do that. We can't do that in the times that we're living in. We need to make sure that what we're hearing, what we're receiving from people, if it doesn't line up with God's word, we need to follow what God is saying instead of being moved by someone because they're in a position. <sighs> we really, really, really need to follow after God's word in this time. The enemy is using people who people have for so long trusted more than what they're doing as far as trusting in God's word. And it is not turning out well for people. So we need to make sure we're trusting God. Um, if something contradicts his word, you need to really, really, really make a right decision and follow after what God's word is saying. Um, there is a story of a um, prophet in 1 Kings chapter 13. And I'm not going to read the whole story, but the gist of the story is the fact that um, the man 
heard from God and the Lord gave him a assignment and told him exactly what to do. And one of the things he told him not to do was to go and um, go the way that he had been and he was not to eat bread or drink water from the place that he had gone where God had sent him. Um, he was to go another way and he wasn't to eat there. And this man ended up um, running into an old prophet and this old prophet was a liar. And this old prophet um, convinced this man to do what God had told him not to do, to go to his house and eat with him. And um, it ended up costing this man his life. Um, so um, it says here that, um, then the king said to the man of God, come home with me and refresh yourself. This is from verse seven of um, first Kings chapter 13. Come home with me and refresh yourself and I will give you a reward. But the man of God replied, if you were to give me half of your possessions, I still would not go with you, nor would I eat bread or drink water in this place. For this is what I was commanded by the word of the Lord. You must not eat bread or drink water or return by the way you came. So this man knows what God's word has said. God has directed him. He's given specific instructions and he is following those instructions to a T when he's talking to the king. But this man has, he um, ends up having the old prophet down at verse number 11. Now a certain old prophet was living in Bethel and his sons came and told him all the deeds that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. They also told their father the words that the man has spoken to the king. So the old prophet knows what um, this man said to the king as far as the instructions from God. It is so important to follow God's instructions because the enemy always is trying to get you to go another direction. So, so he had heard um, the instructions because the sons told him what he said. They also told their father the words that the man had spoken to the king. So the father asked, which way did he go? And his son showed him the way taken by the man of God who had come from Judah. So the prophet said to his son, saddle the donkey for me. They saddled the donkey for him and he mounted and went after the man of God. He found him sitting under an oak tree and asked, are you the man of God who came from Judah? I am, he replied. So the prophet said to the man of God, come home with me and eat some bread. But the man replied, I cannot return with you or eat bread or drink water in this place. For I've been told by the word of the Lord, you must not eat bread or drink water there or return by the way you came. Then the prophet replied, this is the old prophet. I too am a prophet like you. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord. Saying, bring him back with you to your house so that he may eat and drink water, eat, that he may eat bread and drink water. But the old prophet was lying to him. But when the man of God went back with him, ate bread in his house and drank water, while they were sitting at the table, the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back. So now this old prophet has a word from the Lord. The prophet cried out to the man of God who came, who had come from Judah. This is what the Lord says, because you have defied the word of the Lord and have not kept the commandment the Lord your God gave you, but went back and ate bread and drank water in the place where he told you not to. Your body shall never reach the tomb of your fathers. And this man lost his life. He lost his life on the way home. He was killed by a lion. So this is a good example of 
understanding that when God speaks to you, you need to know he's not going to contradict his word. So if someone comes to you with a word opposite of what God has spoken to you or what is written in his word, you know that they are lying. You need to make sure that you are listening to God and his voice. Um, when someone is lying to you, the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. He will let you know this person's lying. You feel it in your spirit. You have to listen to what God is saying to you. Um, next point. The church's job is to equip the people of God to do God's work, not to make them dependent on religious systems. This is so important, especially for the time that we're in. Ephesians 4, um, chapter 11 through, or chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. It says, now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. So we need to make sure that we are maturing. We need to make sure if you are in one of the fivefold ministry gifts, that you are equipping people, not making them dependent on you, but that you're equipping them to be mature so they can stand even when they are by themselves. They need to be able to stand in God's word. Um, don't allow offense to cause you to fall away from the only one, talking about God, and the only thing that can make a difference in your life and your eternal destiny. So, one of the things that we see when people are walking and operating in immaturity is that they're easily offended and we don't want to um, have people in a position of um, immaturity where they can't handle um, things that can offend people. We need to make sure people are mature enough to handle when things happen that they don't like or that offend them. We need to um, equip people to be able to handle that. Uh, Matthew chapter 11 and verse six in the New Living Translation, it says, and he added, God blesses those who do not fall away because of me. Um, in the Berean Standard Bible, it says, blessed is the one who does not fall away on account of me. Um, this is a time where so many people are falling away from the faith, but we who are um, steadfast in God's word need to encourage our brothers and sisters to stand, to um, not be offended by anything um, regarding God's word. Um, <laughs> dealing with church. I know so many people, like I said, have talked about how they've been hurt by the church and they're dealing with church hurt and they've been offended by this or that. But we need to know that God will bless us if we don't allow that to move us away from him. We need to be steadfast in him so we're not moved by things like that that would cause us to fall away. We don't want to fall away, especially not in this time. We want to stick close to the Lord in this time. Um, it's the last days. We need to be sticking close. We need to be hearing him. We need to be in his word. We need to be developing so that we don't fall away. So um, Matthew 24 and 10, the Amplify um, version first, it says, At that time, many will be offended and repelled by their association with me and will fall away from the one whom they should trust and will betray one another, handing over believers to their persecutors and will hate one another. 
<sighs> this is definitely the time we're living in. In the CEV version, it says many will give up and will betray and hate each other. And in the God's word translation, it says, then many will lose faith. They will betray and hate each other. So you know what time we're living in. You see these things around us. Don't be a part of that. Be a part of the remnant that is standing and being steadfast in not being moved by these things that are trying to separate us away from God. We need to continue to develop and stick close to him in this time. Uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 21, in the New Living Translation, it says, But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. Um, we definitely see that right now. Um, in the CEV version, it says, but they don't have deep roots. They don't last very long. As soon as life gets hard or the message gets them in trouble, they give up. Um, in the God's Word translation, it says, since he doesn't have any root, he lasts only a little while. When suffering or persecution comes along because of the word, he immediately falls from faith. So we don't want to be in that position. We really do want to stand on God's word, be mature enough to handle the things that come that might offend us and stick with God. Stick with his word, not be moved, not fall away, not leave the church. We need to continue to develop. Okay, if you are at the age of accountability and you have understanding regarding your actions, you are personally responsible for who you choose to obey. We will not stand before God when we stand before him when all things are at an end, we will not be standing with other people. We won't be standing with our husband or our wives. We will not be standing with our children, our parents. We will be standing before God ourselves. It is personal. You need to understand that you will not have someone to look to to blame for the decisions that you made. You will be standing before God for yourself. Um, Joshua 24 and verse 15 in the New Living Translation, it says, But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods of your ancestors served by the Euphrates, or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. You have to make that choice for yourself. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5, um, in the CEV version first, it says, Don't be controlled by your body. Kill every desire for wrong kinds of sex. Don't be immoral or indecent or have evil thoughts. Don't be greedy, which is the same as worshiping idols. And um, this is dealing with the decision making that we have to do on a daily basis. We have to make right decisions. We must be led by God's spirit in our daily lives, personally. Um, in the Good News translation of Colossians 3 and verse 5, it says, You must put to death then the earthly desires at work in you such as sexual immorality, indecency, lust, evil passions, and greed, for greed is a form of idolatry. So, right decisions on a daily basis, being led by God's Spirit. Um, in everything that we do, we need to be led by God's Spirit, everything. Romans chapter 14 and verse 12 and this is the NHEB version. It says, then each one of us will give account of himself to God. Just what I was talking about earlier. Each one of us personally will have to stand before God. So we need to make sure we're doing what we can as sons of God, making sure that we're living the way that God desires us to live, that we're maturing, 
that we are growing closer to him, that our faith is growing. We need to continue to do those things. Um, and having that right understanding, I know there's teaching out there that says that you don't have to do anything, um, that Jesus did it all. Jesus did do it all for your salvation. Now that you are saved, you need to work out your salvation. You need to do what's necessary in the kingdom. Kingdom people continue to develop. Faith without works is dead. This is a kingdom paradigm. We do not um, live a life of just doing whatever and just believing that God's just going to just bless us when we make choices that are against what his word says. We need to make sure that we are living a life that is growing, that um, we're maturing and we're coming into a greater relationship with the Lord. Um, also, a big area that we need to make sure we grow in, in is regard of what we speak on a daily basis. Our words are powerful. Our words are what we use to operate in the kingdom. That is how we work. We work by speaking. We work the same way God did when he created in the beginning um, by speaking. So we need to understand that our words are extremely important. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, the New Living Translation, it says, and I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. In the Good News Translation, it says you must you can be sure that on Judgment Day, you will have to give an account of every useless word you have ever spoken. So we need to make sure that we understand the words that we speak on a daily basis, conversations we have. We need to make sure we're speaking in line with God's word or, or speaking his word. Um, useless words, words that we say that we don't mean like, my foot is killing me or I, you know, just negative. I don't even want to say anything because I know how powerful words are. Um, and my foot is not killing me. Nothing is killing me. So those are the words that I speak. Uh, make sure that you are aware of how you are speaking on a daily basis. Um, Romans chapter 8, verse 13, the Amplified, it says, For if you are living according to the impulses of the flesh, you are going to die. But if you are living by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually putting to death the sinful deeds of the body, and you will really live forever. So we need to remember that. Um, Romans 6, 16, the CEV says, Don't you know that you are slaves of anyone you obey? On a daily basis, we have choices in life that either improve our life or um, set us back or cause harm or detriment to us. So every day, the choices that are brought before you, the things that you do at work, the things that you eat at your meals, the conversations that you have, ask God to lead you by his spirit so that you are not becoming a slave of what you're obeying. You could be slaves of sin and die, or you can be obedient slaves of God and be acceptable to him. Um, you must develop your personal relationship with the Lord and not become dependent on any leader, because at any time a leader can go astray. And that's another thing we're seeing a lot of in this time that we're living in. Um, when leaders fall, we have to make sure we are in a place where a leader following does not cause us to fall away from God. It is sad to see people who we once looked up to um, fall or be in a position that we wouldn't want them to be in. But that should not stop your relationship with God. That should not keep you from um, operating in the kingdom and, and fulfilling your assignment. That should not stop you. That's where you have to be. That's the level that God wants you to operate at, where you are not moved regardless 
of what people around you are doing, that you stand and continue to stand. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 27, the NIV version says, No, I strike a blow to my body and make it a slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. And the Brian Standard Bible version says, No, I discipline my body, make it my slave, so that after I've preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. And um, this is Paul talking. He's letting us know that even in his position, there's an opportunity that if he makes the wrong choice, he can fall. Any leader can fall. Any person can fall. So we cannot put our trust in that. We have to keep our trust in God and continue to develop so that we're not moved. If things happen, we continue to trust God. Um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21 through 23, the New Heart English Bible it says, If indeed you heard him and were taught in him, even as truth is in Jesus, that you put away as concerning your former way of life, the old self, that grows corrupt after the lust of deceit, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So we have to continue to be renewed through the word, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us. Being directed by God, we need to continue to develop. Um, God's plan is to use you personally to be part of manifesting his kingdom here on earth. Um, in Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 10, it says, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you, and I will reserve you and rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See today, I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and overthrow to build and to plant. In Ephesians chapter 3, verses 8 through 10, this is the CEV version. It says, I am the least important of all God's people, but God was kind and chose me to tell the Gentiles that because of Christ, there are blessings that cannot be measured. God, who created everything, wanted me to help everyone understand the mysterious plan that had always been hidden in his mind then God would use the church to show the powers and authorities in the spiritual world that he has many different kinds of wisdom. So we have an example in the Old Testament, Jeremiah, who didn't think that he was worthy to do what God had called him to do. And then we have Paul, um, the same thing, who didn't feel worthy. I mean, Paul persecuted the church when he was Saul. So... We see that God has a plan to use each person in the kingdom personally. Every person has an assignment personally. So um, regardless of what you had going on in your life before you were saved, regardless of how you were raised, whatever the situation, it does not stop you from fulfilling what God's plan is for your life personally. You must come to a place of maturity where you're able to manifest God's will for your life, being a vessel that God can work through. Uh, Mark chapter 16, and this is the message Bible. It says, they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord worked through them, confirming his word by the signs that accompanied it. Amen. And then 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 9 God's word translation, it says, we are God's co-workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. You need to be able to stay on God's path 
for your life, even if you have to walk it alone. Um, there are times, especially in the times that we're living in, you'll have to stand by yourself, but you need to be able to stand. Um, in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13 through 14, this is the New Living Translation, it says, You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and the gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few ever find it. Um, in Luke chapter 13 and verse 24, the CEV version, it says, do all you can to go in by the narrow door. A lot of people will try to get in, but will not be able to. Okay, the last point, when God speaks to you and the word becomes a rhema word to you, it will manifest in your life. Um, John chapter 6, verse 63, the Brian Standard Bible says, The Spirit gives life, the flesh profits nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit, and they are life. So I hope that this encourages you to continue Continue to um, develop in your walk with the Lord. Continue to personally take time with the Lord and um, get into his word and spend time just talking to God. Um, spend time developing, hearing him the way that you need to for the times that we're living in. We need to be able to hear him clearly, to have direction. Um, and having direction in these times is uh, life and death, we need to make right decisions. We need to know um, which way God is leading us. So I hope that this has encouraged you to continue to develop, and I pray that you will be blessed. God bless you.